Bad Beer Podcast is brought to you by these cool dudes. <laughs> Yo, what's up, everybody? This is Cooley, and you're listening to the Red Beard Podcast, and I'm chilling with my boy. Yeah, what's going on, everybody? This is Tony. How's it going? Yo, it's a, it's a beautiful day out today in New England, uh, Rhode Island specifically, Providence even more specifically. We're talking like 75 degrees. The sun is shining. I'm fucking loving this shit because I am lacking vitamin D severely. <laughs> <laughs> that's why just, just because there's not it's just you need vitamin d you, you, have, oh, you I, don't care I about the heat <laughs> oh no, i need it and i'm not paying for it it's supposed to be natural yeah <laughs> yeah i uh i try to avoid vitamin d not because I, I i don't like vitamin d but because you know i'm i'm a redhead so um i'm in the shade right now in my house and loving it and uh it's apparently it's 70 over here so i guess it's hotter uh, over there because we're on Skype right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of interesting stuff going on in the entertainment uh, world right now. And uh, I know you're excited about some things specifically. So I'm going to let you take the reins on that one. Well, I'm excited about a lot of things specifically. Um, like... Well, you're excited about one thing specifically. I know you, you, love, you love this. I love all the things, <laughs> all the specific things. I love them. Uh, that I'm about to talk about because I'm just—it's just gonna be fucking verbal diarrhea right now. I'm just gonna go off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the first, the first thing on my list, uh, mainly because it was just, uh, you know, sent to me this morning. Um, I didn't know about this, but they're planning another anthology uh, Star Wars uh, movie uh, in the vein of Rogue One. Um, so that's pretty exciting to me. Uh, the the writer Noel um, said that he's about seventy five percent done with his concept and and his in his first like you know draft of the story um, and he's gonna he hasn't pitched it yet but he says that and I agree with him he says he doesn't see any reason why uh, Disney is going to say no because they're gonna keep making Star Wars movies as long as the stories are great and the uh, the interest is there from the fans. Yeah, I can't see why Disney would say no. That, may, that would make complete sense, and it would be a severe loss in money. Anything with Star Wars on it that I think is as good as Rogue One, if not better, is going to make them money, and that's what Disney wants is money. So uh, not that they already have enough of it. But, uh, dude, I think it's going to be awesome, man. I would go see it, you know. Um, I, I don't know. Any any Star Wars movie that comes out, I'll go see. They're just, they're just damn good movies. There's no reason why we wouldn't want more of this. But I will say it's kind of nuts that... Star Wars took such a long, a long break from doing anything. And then like you had episode one, two, three come out. And then all of a sudden it's just like four or five. You had uh, the, the other, like what Star Wars seven came out and then Rogue One came out. And it's just, it's crazy that when you think about when the first Star Wars came out and where we are now, and it's just kind of like this whole re rebirth of the franchise. It's unbelievable, dude. It's blown up again. Yeah, I mean, like, it's it's unbelievable, but it's also pretty believable because I, for me anyway, I don't know if you know all this stuff, but, like, I've been following, like, what's been going on with the franchise since I was a kid, and Lucas was always really fucking weird. Um, like, I love the dude to death. He created some of the greatest shit in the world, uh, the greatest characters in the world. He's, he's behind like, you know, some of the greatest uh, interstellar vehicles in the world, like the millennium, ah, blah, 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 blah. the millennium Falcon, uh, you know, X-wing fighters, tie fighters, the death star, shit like that. I mean, like Vader is one of the most amazing villains ever created, but let's be real. Lucas is a, uh, he was a dick. <laughs> he, he fucking, <laughs> he, he gave us, he gave us star Wars. Yeah. Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Right. And we and we knew based on the titling that we had the second half of the fucking story. <laughs> and we're like, where's the first half? And it took like 20, I, I think it was at least 20, maybe 25 years until we actually got uh, you know, episodes one, two, and three. And they to me, they fucking sucked. Um, like you could take all three of those, mash them up together and like take like <clears throat> cut everything out, make the two hour film and have a real a relevant film. But even even that was still almost unbearable and hard to watch. Yeah, um, but I mean, like some maybe that's just the way that he saw the story in his head. You know what I mean? Like it started at a certain point. He wanted to end it at a certain point, And then, 
down the line was like, all right, let's talk about what happened before. Like, well, I don't no, know. If he, no, you no. Think he did he, it intentionally. Well, absolutely. Because the title of the fucking movie was episode four. Yeah, but I mean, from uh, jump, like we knew that there were three parts before that. Like, I mean, like he and his reasoning and his, the reason why he said he always said it was like the technology wasn't there to make the films that he wanted to make for the for the first part of this. And I call bullshit on that because, I mean, as you go on, you're now now Luke Skywalker is a fucking man, uh, you know, and he was like not even born in one, two, and three yet until like the very end of it. Um, so obviously technology and, you know, what you need for effects and shit like that, that shit's fucking, it grew. Yeah. It had to have. Like in, in any, nothing goes backwards technology wise. So to say that, oh, I didn't have the technology to do the first three parts of this story, but I have the technology to do four, five, and six, um, that to me, that's just kind of shitty. Uh, it's a shitty excuse, but whatever. Well, well maybe he was um, talking about like, you know, cause you're talking about, uh, attack of the clones, you know, like CGI and stuff like that. Like he, he did a lot of, of CGI work with the, you know, those films. Maybe that's what he was referring to. Not the technology yeah, but fuck, in the but film. Fuck CGI. When it comes to the star Wars universe and you've seen this, uh, with rogue one, um, which was mostly, uh, I want to say at least 90% practical effects. Um, I mean, Fuck CGI. I mean, it just. Well, yeah, but I mean, but I, it's a definitely like I agree with you. I'm not a, a huge fan of CGI. I take practical effects over CGI any day. But but creating a war like, a, you know, attack of the clones, like where they had this all this shit going on. And like, I, I mean, like that stuff you can't all do with practical effects. You know, like I'm just playing devil's advocate because that's I'm trying to figure out like, yeah, if you start with episode four, you're obviously telling people that there's something before that. But you know, if he's using that technology excuse as an excuse, then I'm trying to figure out what he was thinking, you know, uh, what, yeah, he, what he exactly meant by that. But that's like that, that's like we'll never know. That's like trying to figure out what Shakespeare really meant when he wrote something. The guy's dead, you know, <laughs> and I don't think yeah. Lucas is ever going to be honest about it. Yeah. And like, yeah, I mean, like what what technology did you need? Like, I mean, like, was it the fucking field that uh, <laughs> Padme and fucking Anakin fell in love on and frolicked through the field and fucking jumped on these like little fucking weird elephant creatures. Fuck that. I didn't even need to see that. Take yeah, that shit out of the fucking movie. That's your favorite scene though. You've admitted oh, that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I admitted that. Sure. Um, <laughs> that, that happened. Um, guys, I love that scene. Uh, <laughs> this is so, so, it's so real, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It tugged on my heartstrings. The, the, uh, you no, know, there was just no, to me, there's no reason for it. I mean, whatever, but Hey, anyway, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about these new things and like, but, but to your point, yes, like he, he's, he fucking took 25. He's the one that took 25 years or 20 years to release one, two, and three. Then one, two, and three came out and that was it. He wasn't doing anything else. Yeah. He was done. And he didn't give a shit. Like he was just like, "That's my, uh, that's my baby," and I'm done with it. And whatever you want to write books, you want to fucking write comics, you want to have video games. That's cool. But we're not getting any more movies. And then Disney said, "Fuck that." Here's four billion, and he was like, "Thanks." And here you go. And now we have amazing movies fucking every year. Yeah. And so, so that's Disney. I credit Disney with that shit. And they do the same thing with Marvel, man. They bought Marvel, and they were like, they saw, they saw Iron Man. Uh, they, they said. Wow, this has got they got something. Let's do it. They fucking bought Marvel and Marvel's been on fire ever since. Disney's amazing. I love I love that company. D yeah, well, dude, obviously. And there there uh there's talks with something. I don't know. There was talks about uh them working with another major technology company, so who will remain unnamed, but we'll we'll figure that out. We'll see what happens with that if that actually comes to fruition. Um I don't know. It's it's crazy, man. There's also um, some other stuff going on uh, that I wanted to jump into regarding Alien Covenant. Um, guys, you got everybody knows I'm obsessed with this whole franchise, and obviously I'm going to be even more obsessed because the film's coming out on May 19th. Uh, but they just released something else online that if you have not checked it out, 
uh, check it out. So last time Cooley and I briefly talked about what happens after the last uh, movie Prometheus uh, and if that stuff was going to be explained. Uh, this prologue actually explains a portion of that. Uh, we talked about how there were some uh, images that were released uh, that were not necessarily the best of quality, uh, where we couldn't necessarily figure out uh, you know, if David was the person standing over this opening of the ship where they land on the, uh, the, the planet that's supposed to be you know, the, uh, where the creators are from. And uh, this prologue one shows uh, Shaw, Dr. Shaw, actually putting him back together, putting his head back to his body and kind of like reattaching it uh, as he guides her on how to do that. And then um, she goes into hypersleep once they actually set uh, course to the, the creator's planet, which is going to take a while. Um, and, you know, since he's the android David, he kind of just like walks around the ship for years and starts to figure out. Uh, you know, these creators and what their purpose was and, and their way of life and, and tries to figure out who they were and, and, and what they stand for. And um, it shows them the ship coming into their planet, which looks like it's kind of being controlled. Um, like if anybody's ever seen um, Independence Day, where uh, at the end, Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum are kind of on there that ship and all of a sudden like it takes hold of the ship and they can't control it anymore and it just kind of brings them in. Uh, it looks like the ship's actually being controlled by whatever is, you know, brings it into their home base. Um, and uh, the bottom of the ship opens and in one of the stills they released, we thought it looked like David was kind of standing there at the bottom opening of the ship. And in the prologue, pro prologue it clearly is him. And you see all these those black canisters of that uh, that goo starting to actually fall through the hole and we know like some shit's about to go down and David's probably responsible for it um, to maybe take them out. So what he found out in that time between, you know, where they're in hypersleep for years and his reasoning behind that has been unexplained, but I'm sure we'll find out more about that when the film's released. But Cooley, you saw it, man. What did you think about this whole thing? Any like uh, first thoughts? I thought it was interesting. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Um, just the character look the character's great i i fucking love david um fastbender's awesome. a great actor um there's definitely some some crazy shit going on with david mm -hmm. and and i love it um it's going to add a, it adds a different um element to the to the alien ser series um yeah the, the the whole the whole android fascination with uh how humans tick yeah you know what makes them tick uh like it's it's just a different take on on a rogue machine um you know instead of it just being like you know trying to wipe out humanity or take over the world or whatever like it just it's experimenting like it's it thinks well, it's that, artificial it's the, artificial intelligence and, and and it's great well that's one of the things that that um when we were talking about this earlier i i thought about right off the bat was it's interesting how david is I don't want to say he's evil, but he just does things that you probably would not think is the best idea. And you wonder, um, like, even though he is a form of AI, um, they never explained, like, if he's capable of making his own decisions or if these if this type of thinking was pre-programmed. So, like, I think of, you know, Wayland, you know, from the beginning, like, he's the one who designed David. So... Did he design him to be like this? Because if you look back in the whole Alien series, like in the first movie, you have that that uh, android. Who we, we thought we didn't even know was an android until halfway through the film. You know, when the, the chest burster comes out the first time and the guy goes to kill it with a knife, he's like, don't touch it. And the guy would have actually killed it and that would have been the end of the Alien series. But it ran away and then they had to go find it. He didn't want him to touch it because he wanted to save it and bring it back to Earth as like a new like life form. So that android was programmed to bring alien life back at all costs. Doesn't matter if every crew member dies. Then you have Bishop, who was actually probably the only uh, android that I saw that was actually in it for, the, for a good cause. Like he saved the lives of Ripley and brought them off the planet when the, when the queen alien was going to kill them and stuff like that. Um, he made an appearance in, in the third movie and gave her information that she needed. Um, but then you got David who's like all fucked up 
And we don't know if, um, you know, if the new version of, of David that they announced was, I think it was Walter that we've been seeing online is different, uh, but, but still has the same, you know, uh, the same design as David looks exactly the same, but might be different inside. So I don't know. It's interesting. I'm interesting to see, to see what will happen if those two actually meet up in the movie. So, um, I don't know. It's a good point, man. You know, like just what, why does he act the way he does? And why does he so interested in finding out why humans tick the way that they do? It's just cool. Well, I I mean, my own personal theory is that like with androids, artificial intelligence, whatever, I mean, it's all, I think it's, I think we, I think if it's, if the artificial intelligence is complex enough, then it's, it's almost like, it's almost like humanity. Um, I mean, like human beings, like we, Everything operates on an if then uh, statement. I mean, like, you know, if if this, then that. Um, and it's the same logic for for artificial intelligence in these androids. So, like, it all depends on what their environment is, where they were, you know, where they gather their experiences from um, and how they process them. So it, it it's I, I think you're going to see Walter be a very different uh, version of of David. Um, and we should see that come to life on the screen. And I think that I, I don't see, uh, any reason why you would have fast bender play two androids, but have them be exactly the same. So like based on their experiences, I think they're going to take very different branches, uh, in this like artificial life that they have. Yeah, no. And I, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that because, because what I've heard is that they, they do meet up in the film at some point. Um, which obviously makes sense because they don't necessarily have like a life expectancy. They live on for years or don't have, you know, they don't die. So that is a possibility. Um, now one thing that might happen is that you might see Walter, uh, start off as like a more benevolent version, like somebody who's more, uh, altruistic, but after events with the alien or whatever, if they meet up and and David talks to Walter and you know gives him his point of view, it's possible that they they have a conversation and arrive at some some medium uh, logic based on what they're talking about it, it it with each other. It just it I can see them easily changing their mind because I think the difference between the AI and the actual human uh, is going to be morality. So right. So the moral code, there's not going to be a moral code. There's going to be just logic. And based on what Walter experienced, like that's how he's going to behave until he meets with David and then they speak. And then who knows? He might flip. David might flip. Who get? Who knows? But I don't think they're going to sit there and say this is right and this is wrong. Right. You know, right. So I don't think there's going to be a right, wrong, evil, good like side of this. It's just all experimentation and, and what's what they think they can accomplish with their experimentation. Yeah, no, I know. I, I definitely, man, I, I think that um, there's still going to be something, some conversation as to, um, yeah, just like, I, I just want to hear, I want to hear more about why he's doing the things that he's doing. Um, there, cause there had something obviously happened that convinces him to drop all this stuff on the creators, uh, which is what it looks like he's about to do. Um, I mean, I think, you know, them ripping his head off might have been enough, but, um, but, you know, there's also a reason behind why they did that. Um, and I have my own reasons, you know, like they, they, if they did create humans, they're something that never should have been created and has gone on too long and therefore needs to be destroyed. Um, which is why he took out like the three that he saw, but, um, who knows, man, we won't find out until May 19th. So, um, check out, uh, alien covenant on a May 19th. I'm psyched about it. Um, uh, I'm hope you guys are too, man. Cause it's going to be badass. So that's all I got on alien covenant. I think this will be a good time to take a quick break and hear a little bit about our sponsor. This episode of the red Beard podcast is brought to you by supply and demand investing. Not all investments are created equal. Guys, did you know that the Standard & Poor's 500 is made up of the 500 of the 2,400 stocks on the New York Stock Exchange? Say word. And that the S&P 500 index, most quoted by the media outlets, is a cap-weighted index. 
A cap-weighted index gives more investment weight to larger companies and incrementally less and less to the smaller ones. Get the fuck out of here. Yet, there's another S&P 500 index that invests in the same 500 stocks equally. The question then is, which of these two indexes do you think has performed better over the past five years? I have an idea. Well, if you want to find out, go to supplyanddemandinvesting.com slash redbeard. That's us, guys. Supplyanddemandinvesting.com slash redbeard. Now, supply and demand investing helps compare investments in the hopes of delivering better than average results, whether they be long-term, short-term, or just something in the middle. And remember, like any good sports team, when it comes to investing, the Giants, there are times to play offense by investing in things like the S&P 500 and times to play defense by investing in things like bonds, CDs, or cash. So I say go Pats. Go Giants. Pats. If you want to find out, check out supplyanddemandinvesting.com slash redbeard. Yeah, man. So uh, speaking of space, nobody can hear you scream. No, they can't. Unless you're in the movie theater watching Guardians of the Galaxy 2. <laughs> I was wondering where you were going with that. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. But but yeah, no, It's a, it, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is uh, upon us uh, next week. Uh, it's already been released uh, overseas, and it's killing it overseas. Uh, yeah, I, I believe it's already raked in about $22 million, um, you know, since last weekend or this past weekend, uh, which is fantastic. That's a fantastic opening in an overseas market. So I think it's going to crush when it opens here. Uh, and I think that's pretty obvious based on what happened last time they opened up in the U.S. But uh, let's talk about what some of the little rumors and, and nuggets that have been dropping are. Uh, now, there's some spoilerific stuff going to be coming out of my mouth. Yep. Over the next couple of minutes. <laughs> Spoilerific. Uh, yeah, it may not be uh, may not be too too bad though. So I mean, I think you can listen unless you're like one of those people that are like, oh, I don't even want to know who's gonna play in this movie. Um, I don't like, think you can spoil too much if you haven't actually seen it yet. Like it's yeah. all somewhat speculation. So well, it's not speculation. This is based on shit that people have seen. Yeah, like, I know <laughs> that, but I don't think that you can necessarily spoil too too much. Like, okay, a couple things, but not edit from coming from somebody who hasn't seen it yet. Dude, Holy. give me tw- give me twenty to give me twenty to forty minutes, and I can spoil the whole shit. Like I I I am not I you know you know I don't care about spoilers. Yeah. So I've researched a lot of shit on this movie, so <laughs> I, I can spoil it. Trust me. But I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it very light on on the spoilers. Um. Like, cause people have seen this shit already. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, this it's not it's not a secret that you know they've had. You know, screenings and it's already been, obviously it's already been released, as I just said, and made 22 million, which means somebody's seen it. Um, so so I've, I've gotten some information on the film, but um, I'm only going to share a small piece of that with y'all right now. Uh, and that's some of the some of the cameos that are coming up. And it's not necessarily I'm not going to tell you who they are, um, that, but I will say that they are some original Guardians of the Galaxy's characters uh, from the comics. Well, you should uh, say at least who's playing them. That's what I yeah, that's what I'm getting at. All right. Um so so you're going to have Ving Rhames in this film. Yeah. Which I had I had no idea that he was going to be in it. Michelle Yeoh uh from Crouching Tiger and and a bunch of other movies including some uh, Jackie Chan films. Uh Super Cop I believe she was in. Um and then you also have Miley Cyrus doing the voice of a character as well as uh shit uh Michael Rosenbaum who played my favorite version of Lex Luthor uh, on Smallville and was one of the only reasons why I watched that show. So to see him actually get another shot at doing a comic book character uh, in Guardians is going to be fantastic. Yeah. Uh, now, now, what Marvel's been talking about uh, recently, they actually just dropped that uh, James Gunn is not only doing uh, the the writing and the production behind and the directing behind uh, guardians of the galaxy volume three, but he's also laying the foundation for what's going to be happening after Avengers four for the next 10 years in the Marvel universe on, on, on the big screen. Um, so James Gunn who brought guardians of the galaxy to life and made it one of my all time favorite films ever. Um, 
is going to be steering the Marvel Universe uh, for the next 10 years. And that is that is solid fucking news. But it's also a little worrisome because I know James Gunn and I know his history. And I also know that, you know, hey, he knocked it out the park with Guardians. But he's a hit or miss director, man. He's a hit or miss writer and director. Uh, Slither was fantastic. But, dude, like, I mean, besides Slither and, and fucking Guardians, I mean, like, he doesn't have, like, a huge, like, well-received body of work, in my opinion. Um, but maybe because he loves this shit so much and maybe because comics and, and the Guardians and Marvel Cosmic is so dear to him, I don't th- I don't really think he's going to fuck it up. So I'm not that worried. It's a very little it's a very small fucking worry that I have, but I mean, I think I'll get over it. I mean, do you think that I mean, think well, think about that for a second. Like James Gunn, like you you're James Gunn and somebody's like, "Hey, guess what? Like uh you're in charge of Marvel for the next 10 years or like you're going to be basically running the Marvel universe in a sense." Like, what a sick gig to have, you know? Like that's that's badass, but um well, I don't think he's. I, I mean, I, 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 probably said that wrong. I don't think well, he's I don't mean, be running I don't mean, it. I'm not saying running. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I know he's not in control of it, but he's going to have a hand in it. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. And, and what and it's how gonna, the storyline goes. It's going to be a lot like Whedon. Uh, okay. You know, like with Avengers one up until Avengers two, and then before he before he left. Um, you know, I thought the Russo brothers were going to be the ones to like actually, you know, shape the Marvel universe going forward. But it looks like Gunn is getting that as a uh, a thumbs up from Feige. All I can say is is from see, you know hearing that like Ving Rhames is going to be in it. Like I'm a big fan of his ever since you know the Mission Impossible movies and the other random stuff he's done. Um, so I can only imagine um, what kind of element he's going to bring to the film. We got other awesome people in it, which we've seen in the trailer, like Kurt Russell. Um, and we've seen him do more and more stuff, um, online, you know, like as we've, as more stuff is released regarding guardians, um, I've seen more snippets of what he's going to be doing in the movie and some of like the trailers and the, the TV spots. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, cause he's just such a damn good actor. And, um, I don't know. I just, they just saying that like guardians is going to be like one of the biggest films of the summer. And I'm, I'm sure that it is, but um, it's just unbelievable how, how much Marvel is doing an awesome job promoting this film. Like they really are. Like I, I haven't, I've been hearing about guardian since last year, you know, since the, since the last one came out, they've been talking about this next one. They've been doing like TV spots, like behind the scenes stuff that we've watched where they were giving us like tours of the, of the set before this movie was even done filming yet. Like they were building the sets and we were seeing behind the scenes shit. You know, um, they're, they're constantly making jokes that they're throwing out on YouTube. They're, you know, showing us stuff to get us all amped up about this. And that all has to be, um, you know, green lighted for them to release that stuff with Marvel. So they, they've been getting us psyched up for over a year, you know? So the fact that like this movie is around the corner, um, it, it makes so much sense that we're just getting as amped up as we are for this. So uh, dude, I I was I thought the first Guardians was a good movie. I wasn't as blown away as everybody else, but like I'm getting psyched up for this movie. Like I'm pumped to go see this. So, um, and Chris Pratt's gonna kill it again, man, because he's so damn good. And you also don't forget, like you know, you got the voice of Bradley Cooper. You know, like I keep forgetting it's him until I see him and I hear his voice in the trailer all digitized. You know, yeah. um, um, and obviously, uh. <laughs> they paid Vin Diesel a lot to just keep saying I am Groot <laughs> yeah. so, while he was doing uh, the fate of the furious. So, I mean, all the shit that we loved about the first movie is going to be taking, I think to the next level in the second one. Um, I don't know, man. It just looks badass, Um, <laughs> dude. I don't know. Dude, it's going to be fucking awesome, man. And, and apparently, uh, Stallone impressed because, uh, Marvel and Feige and the the studios they they want him to do more with Marvel so hopefully uh Starhawk actually does become like a major character for the the franchise. Yeah. No, I think that he will. Um I do you think that uh do you think they're going to like what other characters do you th- being a fan of of Guardians and knowing the comic well like Besides the the people that you already talked about, do you think there's any other characters that they're going to put in the third movie that 
you know, that, that you know about because you're a fan and know the storyline that we don't? Well, I know Adam Warlock. I already talked about that, I think, last week or the week before um, is actually announced to be in, Guard- in Guardians 3. That's like the whole point of that movie uh, is to bring him into the fold. Uh, so that's interesting to me. Um, I'm almost feeling like because and something that I didn't mention before is like they've split up the um, Infinity War. Infinity War was supposed to be Infinity War Part 1 and Infinity War Part 2. So they've split it up and now it's Infinity War and Avengers 4, which they haven't titled yet. But Zoe Saldana um, actually kind of, you know, leaked the name of the the movie by saying, you know, after we finish filming this, I, I, you know, I got a lot more work to do. We're going to start filming the Gauntlet movie. Um, So I'm thinking it's going to be Infinity War and Infinity Gauntlet. Matter of fact, I, I fucking slap myself in the face right now because I remember reading that they confirmed that uh, they actually did come out and say that the next one is Infinity Gauntlet, um, which is interesting to me because Infinity Gauntlet came first in the books, but, you know, whatever. Um, I guess this one is basically going to be like Thanos quest where he's going to get the the stones. Once he gets the stones, uh, that should roll into Infinity Gauntlet. Uh Funny that we may still have no Adam Warlock in that film, but Adam Warlock should be showing up in Guardians 3. Uh, and hopefully Guardians 3 is kind of like the culmination of everything. So that Guardians 3 may end up being like Avengers 5, you know? Right. And we've seen Thanos. Where did Thanos actually appear uh, in post credit scenes? It was, was it Guardians or it was the other movies? A couple other movies, the Avengers movies. I forgot. Uh, it was Avengers, the first Avengers movie. Yeah. Um, I believe it was the second Avengers movie, too, um, mm-hmm. where he actually grabs the gauntlet right. and and says, uh, you know, it's either that or it's uh, it's either that or it's Civil War. I can't remember. It might have been the Civil War end credit scene. Yeah. It says, is. like, if you want something done, you have to do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then, of course, he was in Guardians of the Galaxy. So, right. um, you know all badass and sitting on his throne and you know calling people like ronan boy <laughs> yeah <laughs> fucking love yeah. that shit <laughs> fucking um, love that dude it's gonna be uh, i i'm pumped for thanos man that's something that's a character they've been building up for a long time so he better like throw down shit when he actually shows up so. oh he's gonna throw down believe me that yeah. the mad the mad titan is fucking amazing that is a dope ass character i fucking love thanos one of my favorites ever yeah. Well, um, so yeah, a lot, a lot to look forward to, man. A ton, a ton to look forward to. Um, and, uh, also what, is there anything else going on? What are the movies that we have coming out this summer? I keep forgetting to, cause there's just so many of them. Guardians, alien, what else? Wonder woman, wonder woman. That's another one that looks awesome. Um, that's one film, a standalone film that I think, uh, from, you know, DC actually looks like it might be pretty fucking good. I hope it's good, man. Like I, I think, you know, just from a standpoint of, you know, having a, a strong female character, uh, you know, lead a film, it's something that's necessary, man. And and it's got to it's got to pass the Blackdale test, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but have you seen? Yeah, shit. but I mean, have you seen anything in the trailer that would lead you to believe that it's not going to be good so far? Because I have uh, the the amount of Chris Pine that I see. Absolutely. Fucking. Uh, makes yeah. Me feel but that. I mean, like, I don't know, man. I, I, I feel like Chris Pine, like. I understand where you're coming from. We talked about that before, but I don't think he's going to be as as present as we think he is. I think we're going to be focusing more on Wonder Woman than her, than him. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't know that until we actually see it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hold out hope that you know they get it right. But if he becomes like even if he takes any of the focus of the movie off of Wonder Woman, then I'm gonna be fucking. I'm just gonna be di- disenchanted. It's yeah. it's gonna it's gonna fucking ruin it for me. Gotcha. Oh, dude. Oh. So, speaking of DC, I think they actually did get something right. Uh, so brace yourself. Okay. You, are you ready? Are you sitting down? I, I am. You can see me. I'm sitting down. <laughs> yes. Fuck. All right. So they found a director for The Flash. Oh, shit. Who is it? Robert Zemeckis. Are you serious, dude? Zemeckis is doing this? Yes, sir. Dude, that's insane, man. How did they lock him down? <laughs> um, 
dude, there's there's two reasons why it's fucking awesome that that he's doing this. Uh, one, uh, and and most obvious is that the Flash as a character is a time traveler because he can run so fast that he can go back in time, forward in time, whatever. Right? Like, like he's got the ability to time travel. Um, and we all know what RZ did, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so right there, uh, it's like a perfect pairing. Um, but even more so, even deeper is just the type of character that Marty McFly was is the same character that I believe the flash should be in, yep. in this film. Uh, not that, all right, so not that Barry Allen is like Marty McFly in the comics, because the comics in this film are going to be completely different. But the character Ezra, the the character actor Ezra Miller, um, and the way that he's playing the character of the Flash, uh, as apparent in the uh, the Justice League films, just reminds me of a Marty McFly type character. And the to have Zemeckis uh, actually like direct this film and and write this film and take a, a time traveling character that has like the soul of Marty McFly and and make a superhero film I think it's a fucking it's it's knocking it out the park and I mean if they fuck this up then I have zero faith in DC ever again well I mean you're are you making the Marty McFly reference because he directed the back to the future yes all right cool all right all right yeah because I was thinking the same thing like the fact that we have a director who has done all these films. I mean, you're talking like back to the future one. Uh, I don't think he did two, but he did three. Um, He's done like Forrest Gump, Castaway, the polar express, what lies beneath. Um, There's another one too, like some newer, like what was it? Um, Contact with Jodie Foster, um, Gothica, like this guy has done like everything. Like then, oh, what was it? Uh, Polar Express. He did that, and then um, another animated with the uh, uh, A Christmas Carol, the one with Jim Carrey. But I mean, like the guy's done everything. So just those alone, you know, I I, I feel like I would be very surprised if he fucked this up. Very surprised. Oh, it's not about him fucking it up. It's not. It's not about him fucking it up. It's about Warner Brothers putting their fucking hands in it and fucking it up. Yeah, but I think that Zemeckis is such a is such a an, a well known director that I don't think he's stupid enough to let things go uh, to let things go in a shitty way. Like a director has a lot to say. Like it's his vision. So if he's made enough films and he's worked with enough people to be like this shit's not going to work, we're not doing it. So I think that I think that he'll have a, a big say in how the movie is filmed, and he's not going to do something that he doesn't think is going to work. And he's got enough under his belt to know what's going to work and what's not going to. So I have a lot of faith in, in the film knowing that he's going to direct it. You know, so um, that in itself. Like I, I'm jealous. I, I'm jealous. I wish they had used him for like a Marvel character. But yeah. uh, the, the, Flash, the Flash is one of my favorite DC characters. Like if I, had, if I had a list of favorite DC characters, it only goes three deep. And it's Batman, The Flash, and Green Lantern. Yeah. So right. so to know that they're going to get the flash right at least is is fucking very heartwarming. I'm souped. I can't wait to see it. Hell yeah, man. Um Robert Zemeckis, dude, that that brightened my day. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> it really did. I'm glad you mentioned that. I did not know that. That is so badass. Um dude, if you didn't mention Wonder Woman, it probably I probably would have forgotten all about it, man. Yeah. Cuz I cuz I had just like talked about it with with uh Roberto. Yeah. Um and um, I saw the news last night and I and I thought, oh, man, we got to talk about this on the podcast. And I never fucking wrote it down. So <laughs> that was. But if you didn't mention D.C., I wouldn't have gone on that fucking tangent. And then I wouldn't have fucking said, oh, yeah, they are getting something right. Well, I'd like to say that that was my plan, but it wasn't. <laughs> so, oh, shit. Well, um, dude, that's that's all I got for today. I don't know about you. Yeah, man. Me, too. I'm done. I, I'm I'm spent. Um, I wanted to just remind everybody, those of you who are going to New York Comic Con, um, they are starting to send out uh, the links. So if you guys went last year, um, you should be getting links, you know, for like, you know, the pre-sale, which happens tomorrow. So 
hey, you know, make sure you get your tickets because New York Comic Con is going to be probably better than last year. And last year was fucking awesome. So we'll be there as usual. Uh, we got Kineticon coming up and uh, obviously down the road, Rhode Island Comic Con, which uh, uh, they released some um, some guests. Dolph Lundgren's going to be there. Val Kilmer's going to be there. Um, some pretty, pretty big names. Um, also, uh, there are two guests that they are going to release um, next week. They haven't, they said that they're really big names, but they won't be releasing them until next Thursday. So oh, uh, Michael Coulter is going to be there too. Yeah. I heard about that. I did hear about that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, man, they, some two big names that they're, they're getting ready to, uh, to announce. So we'll try to keep you guys posted on that when we find out. So word. All right. Well, that's it uh, for Red Beer Podcast this Friday. We will catch you guys next week. See ya. Peace. Later.